So the first thing you're going to do is open up a web browser and type in install.wled.me. At this point you can plug your ESP32 board into your PC, but make sure the micro USB cord you use does support data transfer. Next in the drop down menu you're going to have to select the sound reactive version of WLED which is found at the bottom. Now click install and for me the device showed up under the COM5 port so I'll select that and hit connect. And now install WLED SR. One thing to mention is that some ESP32 boards at this point will require you to hold down the boot button before selecting install. You can now release the boot button since it did connect. Now that it's installed, go to your Wi-Fi connections and connect to WLED-AP. If it asks for a password, the default one is lowercase WLED123. Once connected, this WLED home screen should automatically pop up in your browser. If it doesn't, you can type in 4.3.2.1, which should bring up the same menu. Next, you can click on Wi-Fi settings and enter your home Wi-Fi username and password near the top. Now I also recommend scrolling down and changing this to something you can remember in case you want to access WLED from your web browser versus the app from your phone or tablet. Now click save and connect to have the changes updated. Next, make sure you're back on your home Wi-Fi and let's type in the sound.local in our browser just to make sure that the update was successful. The menu did come up so everything is looking good so far. Now we can move on to the next steps. So this is the microphone I'll be using for this project. And as a reminder, I'll leave links to all the materials I'm using in the description. The first thing I'm going to do is solder the three pins that it came with onto the board. I do want to mention that you could very well use some breadboard jumper wires to connect this to our setup, but I'll be soldering some wires directly onto the post for a little stronger connection. I'll be using my favorite 18 gauge silicon wires that are about 6 inches in length. I also don't know why I waited so long to get this type of tool since it makes the process so much quicker and easier. Next, just give the wires a good twist. Here I'm going to be tinning the wires. I'll also leave a link in the description to my soldering for beginners video that I made that I highly recommend watching if any of what I'm doing from this point forward seems confusing or difficult from a soldering standpoint. In that video I go over things in a little more detail as well as providing some very close up footage of what's happening. For this step I'm going to go back to the microphone and apply a little bit of solder to all three posts. Now I'll be taking my red wire and attaching it to the VCC post, the black to the ground, and the yellow to the out. To do this just place the tinned wire against the tin post and use the iron to heat things up. It should fuse together and once the heat's removed it should stay put. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to be applying some heat shrink tubing to the connectors. So here's our ESP32 board that we installed WLED sound reactive on earlier. As for the wires that are already connected, if you need help with that process, watch the soldering for beginners video I made that will take you through step by step on how to do it. Right now, however, we need to get our microphone connected to the module. For this, I'm going to be using the 3V3 pin and the D35 pin. And here, I'll be applying a little bit of solder to both of those. All I'm going to be doing now is attaching the red wire that's connected to the VCC pin on the microphone to the 3V3 pin on the ESP board, and then the yellow cable coming from the out pin on the mic to the D35 post on the module. 
And for now, you don't have to do anything with the black GND wire connected to the mic. Now let's get everything set up. These three wires are already connected to the beginning of an LED strip that I have installed in this project that I made recently. I'll be using this 5 volt 10 amp power supply which I've already connected a black ground and red voltage wire to. And if you wanted to use a slightly larger power supply like I have here, the setup process would essentially be the same. For this next step I'm going to be using three Wago connectors. One needs to have at least four openings, one needs to have three, and the other can have two. Since I made sure all the wires were color coordinated, this next part is super easy. First, all four black, ground, or negative wires can go into the big Wago connector. The two green data wires will be attached. And finally, all three voltage cables can be snapped in place. At this point, let's plug the power in and get things up and running. If you haven't done so already, download the WLED app and once it's installed, go ahead and open it up. Click the plus icon near the top right and then hit discover lights. It should find all the devices you have connected to your home network and now just hit the check mark at the top right. The bottom result is the one we just set up, so I'll go ahead and delete the other two for now to make things easier to follow. Now you can click on the WLED sound reactive section to be taken to the interface. Next, go ahead and click on configure at the top right and then into sound settings. This is where you can adjust the squelching gain, but more importantly, make sure the analog input pin near the bottom is set to 35. Make sure to click save and then go back to the main interface. The other thing you'll more than likely have to do is go back to configure and then click on LED preferences. I usually like to set the automatic brightness limiter to 2000 milliamps, and further down is where you can input how many LEDs your setup has. I'm going to keep it at 30 for this quick demo. I'll go over a few of the basics so you can get a feel for how things work. Under the effects, you're going to have all your sound reactive animations you can choose from. Testing. Hello. And I'll stop it here to quickly highlight one of the easy ways you can customize things. Under most sound reactive options, you'll have these two sliders you can tweak to get different results. For this specific one, I can control the rate of fall and the sensitivity to the sound. So as you're going through all the different effects, make sure to play around with these two bars. I'm still very much learning the ins and outs of it, but it's been so much fun playing around with the sound reactive version of WLED. From here I'll just play some music so you can see the program in action.